Last night we updated Tesla Model S for 2021 was presented and I wanted to share some thoughts on cooling and aerodynamics with you. First of all, it's amazing that the Tesla Model S, which is 9 years old now, still looks like a brand new car. And while other manufacturers constantly work on so-called Tesla killers, no one could really come close to the Model S so far. Tesla is a manufacturer with a pretty honest design. So what do I mean by that? If we take a look at intakes, for example, we will see that every air intake of a Tesla has a function. It's there for a certain reason. This is what we call form follows function. And it's true here. And if we look at other manufacturers, you get lots of fake intakes and outlets just to reach a certain aggressive design and to give the customer the impression his car is something it's not. At the very beginning, Tesla started with the big fake air intake like other manufacturers too, but when the customers got used to Teslas, they removed it with the first facelift. The only air intake on all Tesla cars that is just there for design reasons is the upper center intake of the Model S. And since we talk about air intakes, let's have a look at the Tesla Model S cooling system of early rear-wheel drive cars. Tesla put a small water radiator in the center and a condenser either side slightly further back. They had air intakes in the center and on each side. Within the ducting there were four flaps to control the flow. The, ba the basic functions were 1. All flaps closed, no air goes through radiator or condensers, 2. Center flaps are open, flow through radiator and the warm airflow would flow through the condensers either side. So this would be a low mass flow through the condensers. 3. Center flaps closed, side flaps open, maximum flow through condensers and no air flowing through the radiator. And 4. All flaps open, maximum flow through the radiator and condensers. A very clever system which provides you with lots of different cooling configurations for every situation. But it got even better. With every over-the-air update the system could do more. Tesla started to do asymmetrical functions like this. Only opening one center flap, that gives you some flow through the radiator and condenser. Or this, opening one center flap and the side flap on the opposite side. This gives you some cooling for the water and some pre-cooling for the first condenser and a decent sub-cooling for the second condenser. Because of the updates, the functions kept on becoming more and more intelligent. And this was driving engineers at traditional car makers nuts. Because every time they tested the car, the Tesla could do something else. And more importantly, the Tesla could do things their own cars couldn't. A genius system that was only one part of establishing Tesla's image of a hardcore engineering company among automotive engineers. This is also how you attract good engineers to join your company. For later models, Tesla learned that they wouldn't need such a complex system and they changed to a more cost-efficient cooling system with a center cooling package and only one air flap for the following models. From what we can see so far, it looks like they changed that center cooling package on the 2021 Model S as well. It makes sense from a cost point of view, and if it does the job, why keep the complex system? Tesla claimed a drag coefficient of 0.208 for the new Model S, which is an impressive number for a production vehicle. In traditional car industry, you always have to be a bit careful with drag coefficients, because manufacturers will create a so-called drag hero. That is effectively a version of the car with a lowered body, thin wheels, smallest drivetrain, no side mirrors and a lot of tape all around. They put this car in the wind tunnel and what you get as a result is a value for drag coefficient times frontal area. They then increase the frontal area of the car as much as possible, putting wider wheels on, side mirrors and so on, and use this larger frontal area to calculate the drag coefficient, which will be a lot lower than what it really is. Later on, the customer is buying the car in a different version than the drag hero, and even if he would, he would never reach the drag coefficient in the catalog. In fact, the real-life drag coefficient of cars is usually significantly higher than whatever the manufacturer claimed. The drag coefficient is important for the resistance you set on the dyno when you measure the emissions of the car, but that's a different topic. If we look at the 0.208 drag coefficient of the Tesla Model S, we shouldn't forget that the car also got a bit wider, which is increasing the frontal area. It would be great to see how Tesla is calculating the drag coefficients, because as far as I know, they only develop their aerodynamics in CFD. So it would be great to see if they use the same tricks as traditional car brands, or if they use the car in a realistic configuration. All in all, I'm looking forward to test the new Model S and to have a closer look at all the changes in detail. How do you like the updated version? Let me know in the comments below.